Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Filmcast. My name is Asher, and today I'll be telling part four of my cryptic monster universe, a Nancy's Goat Man. I think that's how you say it, but I'm not going to waste any time trying to pronounce it. I know why you're here. You want to hear the story, so let's not waste any more time and get into a Nancy's Goat Man. In the forests of Huntsville, Alabama, a 16-year-old African-American boy named Charlie is walking with his cousins to a campsite. The campsite is located on a farm property that belongs to Charlie's uncle, and it has a few trailers deep within the forest where they will sleep in. The group arrives to the campsite and begins setting up their things. The group is soon visited by an older Caucasian man who is accompanied by a younger boy named Tanner, who is around the same age as Charlie. Tanner asks the man if he can camp with Charlie and the others, and the older man allows him to do so. Before the old man leaves, he tells the group to be careful because there is a, quote, big animal in the woods, after which he heads on his way while Tanner joins the group. The group now consists of Charlie, his five cousins, and Tanner. The group plays games such as football and even jump into a nearby lake to swim. Eventually, they go back and just relax by the campfire. During their fun, they run out of beer, so Rooster, one of Charlie's cousins, offers to travel back to Charlie's uncle's house and get some more, despite it being a few miles away. Rooster travels off, and the rest just sit back and tell stories while they wait for Rooster to return. A few hours later, Rooster returns with the beers and hands them to everyone. Charlie asks Rooster if he wants one, but Rooster just shakes his head sideways instead of saying no. Charlie is confused by Rooster not responding vocally, but just lets it slide as he knows Rooster to be a quiet person. Several minutes later, James, another one of Charlie's cousins, gets up and walks into the woods to pee, and the rest just continue to relax, tell stories, and just mess around. Soon, however, Charlie notices that Rooster isn't present, so he and Tanner start looking for him. The scene cuts to James standing in the forest smoking a cigarette, but unknown to him, Rooster is standing right behind him and not making a sound. Rooster slowly approaches him and starts to metamorphose into something different from a human. Rooster's hands start growing and changing with claws. His jaw starts to elongate and reveal razor-sharp teeth, and his eyes begin changing to be shiny and anger-filled. Rooster, or what used to be Rooster, is about to attack James, who still doesn't notice the creature behind him, but the monster's intentions are halted when Tanner walks up and sees what Rooster has become. Tanner yells, and this causes James to turn around and see the monster standing behind him. The creature then slashes at James and claws his face, and then runs off into the forest. Tanner helps James to his feet, and together they run back to the campsite and are greeted by Charlie and the remaining cousins. After James gets patched up, everyone starts talking about what they saw and start debating not only on what this creature was, but also what to do now that a mysterious monster is out in the woods. Junior, another one of Charlie's cousins, suggests that what they saw was possibly a mythical creature known as the Goat Man. He explains that the Goat Man is a humanoid creature with the body of a human and the head of a goat. Junior goes on to say that the Goat Man is extremely dangerous and has the ability to shapeshift. Realizing that the danger the Goatman poses to the group, everyone plans to escape from the forest and reach Charlie's uncle's house, after which they will drive off to safety. Everyone prepares to make a run for it, and they collect some supplies, such as walkie-talkies, a rifle owned by Tanner, and some food. The group exit the trailer and start running through the woods back to the house, but soon they are confronted by the Goatman, who jumps from a tree and lands in front of them. This causes the group to disperse, with Tanner and Charlie going one direction, Junior and Charlie's last cousin Reese going another, and James to go alone. Tanner and Charlie run and make their way back to the trailers, while Junior and Reese run deeper into the forest, with the goat man chasing them. James, meanwhile, is off on his own, and after hiding behind a tree, pulls out a walkie-talkie and tries to contact the others. James gets no response from Junior and Reese, but does get in contact with Charlie and Tanner, who tell him to come back to the campsite, which he agrees to do. Back at the campsite, Charlie and Tanner discuss on what to do now that their initial plan to escape has failed. They soon decide to attempt to get everyone back to the trailers and hold out until morning, after which they will run out of the woods and get to safety. Charlie tries to contact Junior and Reese, but gets no response from them. He then tries to call for James, but he doesn't respond either. Suddenly, James arrives and starts banging on the door, and the two let him in. The two ask James if he saw Junior and Reese, but he simply replies with, No. Charlie then suggests he should venture into the woods and see if he can find Junior and Reese. Tanner suggests to him that's a very bad idea, but Charlie decides to go anyway because he doesn't want to leave them out there. Charlie gathers a flashlight, radio, and a rifle as he is about to travel into the woods. Tanner then asks to go with him, but Charlie tells him to stay behind and watch over the campsite with James to make sure nothing bad happens while he's gone. Charlie exits the trailer, and after walking for a while, Tanner keeps constant contact with him through the walkie-talkies. Charlie looks around for Junior and Reese, but doesn't find them anywhere, and never gets a response when he calls out for them, but soon smells a horrible scent in the air and starts following it. 
Charlie traces the scent to a wide hole in the ground, and after shining a flashlight into it, is horrified to find the mutilated bodies of Junior and Reese in it. Charlie then contacts Tanner to inform him of the bodies and tells them he's coming back to the trailers. Back at the trailer, Tanner is upset by the loss, and after catching his thoughts, realizes something that makes his heart drop. He remembers that James doesn't have the scratch mark he received from the goat man on his face earlier. Tanner then realizes that James is the goat man. He tries to warn Charlie, but he gets attacked by the goat man still in the form of James. Tanner starts using materials in the trailer, such as pans and knives to fight the goat man off, but eventually he gets overpowered and gets thrown out the door of the trailer. The goat man pins him down and starts changing back into its original form as it prepares to kill Tanner, but Charlie then shows up and shoots the monster a few times, causing it to retreat back into the forest. The two get back into the trailer, and knowing they are the last ones left, they hold out as they wait for morning to arrive and never sleep as they hear the goat man inside and keep a constant eye out for the monster, but they never see it. A few hours later, daylight finally breaks out, and the duo prepare to make a final charge through the forest. As the goat man's sounds fall silent, they run out and get terrified as they hear something chase them behind, but they manage to get out of the forest and make it to Charlie's uncle's house. They get in a car, and Charlie begins to drive off while Tanner looks out to make sure the goat man isn't still following them. As Charlie and Tanner drive away, Tanner sees the goat man out the back window in its true form, standing at the tree line in the distance, staring at them. The goat man lets out one last roar, and then walks back into the forest and disappears. And the story ends. And that's the end of my version of a Nancy's goat man. It's shorter than the original, but I decided to write my own version of this story, and I think it turned out well. I hope you enjoyed today's film cast, and join me next time when I read the next part of the series, The OMC. Until next time, peace out.